Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm going to be covering how to fly an RNAV approach with the A310 in Microsoft Flight Sim. The A310 is actually the first generation of Airbuses that can fly an RNAV approach, but because it's almost 40 years old, it doesn't work like it does in the A320, and there are a bunch of limitations that you need to be aware of, so I'm going to try and clear all of that up in this video. I'm on the ground at runway 27 in Miami and I'm going to show you how to fly this one by doing a full circuit of the airport so you can try it out for yourself. I really recommend that you try it like this the first time because it is a little bit tricky to get it right and there's nothing worse than being at the end of a long flight and then screwing up your landing and having to go around and try again. I'm going to start by setting up the box for this and on the init page I'm going to set the from to to just be KMIA to KMIA since I'm really just going to be taking off doing a giant loop of the airport then coming around and landing back on the same runway. The only other detail that I'm going to change on this page is my cruise altitude and I'm going to set that to 5000 feet so FL50 and I'm going to show you why I chose that altitude in just a second. I'm going to leave everything else on this page blank and I'll go to the flight plan page next. I'm not going to touch the departure airport, I'll leave that as is, but I'm going to go into the arrival airport and in the list of runways I'm just going to keep scrolling until I get to the RNAV to runway 27. There are two different ones to pick from, there's the Zulu and the Yankee approach and from what I've researched it seems like in the real world this airplane could probably only fly the Yankee approach. But in the sim, you can pick either one, and I really recommend using the Zulu one because it'll be a little bit simpler. For the transition, if we have a look at the chart, you can see that the Hendon waypoint is about 20 nautical miles out from the runway, and that's about what we're looking for just to do our little practice run. So if you're using a different airport and a different one way, look for an initial approach fix that's about that distance as well. Like I was saying a little bit earlier, the reason I used 5,000 feet for the altitude is because that's the platform altitude I need to be at once I get to that initial approach fix at Hendon. Alright, with that done, I'm just going to pick none for the star and insert that into the flight plan. And now I'm going to go into plan mode just so I can show you what we're going to be doing. I'll be taking off and flying runway heading until I get to 1,000 feet, at which point I'm going to start a left-hand turn onto the downwind leg and continue climbing up to 5,000. And then I'm going to continue flying parallel to the approach path until I get to the initial approach fix, at which point I'm going to turn around and fly the RNAV approach. If you're using the same runway as I am, there's one thing you should be aware of. It seems like there's a little bit of a bug that I found with this approach. If I have a look at the Jimroy waypoint, it says it on the chart that I should be at 4,000 feet. But if I have a look in the flight plan in the McDo, it actually says I should be at 5,000 on this screen. But once I click through to it, it actually says 4,000 feet. What I did to fix it was just press the clear altitude button and I re-entered the 4,000 foot altitude for the Jimroy waypoint and then the flight plan was fine and it actually flew it fine as well. You should always check the chart for these types of details anyways to make sure that everything is correct. I only noticed it once I flew the RNAV approach for the first time and I had to correct it the next time I flew it. There's only a couple more things that I want to set up before takeoff and I'm gonna go into the EFB to set up my weight and balance and my V-speeds. I'll typically only put a couple of people on the airplane and no cargo for this type of test flight and I'll load up about 20,000 pounds of fuel because it gives me a good amount that I can go around a couple of times if I need to. That gives me a CG of 28.2 so I'll just take note of that so I can set it up in a second. My gross weight is around 200,000 pounds so if I go to the takeoff calculator and I plug that number in and just use the defaults for the runway heading, runway length, the wind and weather, you can really set anything in it. It doesn't really matter for this short of a flight, so long as the weather isn't crazy. And finally, just make sure you use the right altimeter setting and just press calculate to get your V speeds. That's telling me to use 135, 135, and 154, so I'm going to go back to the McDo and set all of that up. To do that, I just have to go to the progress page and from there I can press the fuel prediction button and I can type in my value for the CG and just load it into the appropriate box on the top right. And once that's done, I can go into the takeoff approach page and just enter my V1 and my VR speeds here. For V2, as usual, you can't set it from here. You actually have to go up to the autopilot panel to set it, so I'm just going to tune that right now. 
And while I'm here, I'm also going to set my level off altitude in the autopilot. In this case, I'm going to be going to 5,000 feet, so I'll just bring that down from 10,000. And for the heading bug, I'm actually going to set it to 180 degrees opposite of the current heading that it's on. It's currently synced to the runway heading, and what I want it to do is to be the opposite, so that when I enable it, the airplane will automatically turn to the downwind leg if I'm not already there. I'm also going to arm heading select now so that once the autopilot does turn on, it automatically flies my heading for me. The last thing to do is set the flaps, and with that done, I am pretty much ready to go. We're going to get back to the video here in just a second, but I do want to remind you to hit the like button if you haven't already, and consider subscribing as well. I publish a new video every two weeks with tips, tricks, and tutorials for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and your support helps to keep the channel growing. Alright, I'm airborne now and I started a left 180 degree turn from the runway heading so that I end up on what's effectively a very high downwind leg that's basically parallel to the runway and the approach. At this point, if I wanted to, I could just turn the autopilot on and it would take care of rolling out on the right heading and altitude for me because we set all of that up before takeoff. But I'm going to hand fly the airplane just a little bit longer because it's a lot of fun to fly big jets this way. And you'll probably notice that I didn't cover how to do the takeoff in this video. I'm assuming if you're looking at how to do an RNAV approach, it's because you're already a little bit familiar with the airplane. But if it's your first time flying it and you're looking to just have a little bit of a better understanding of how to get up in the air with it, make sure to check out the ILS tutorial that I made because in that one I cover everything, even the takeoff. Alright, I am flying parallel to the runway and the approach now. You can see it on the navigation display as well that I'm just a little bit offset to the right by a couple of miles. I can set up a few things for the approach now though, and the first of those is to make sure that the altimeter is set properly to the local value for the airport you're landing at. In my case, I don't need to change it because it's exactly what it was from where I took off, but if you're coming in from a full flight, make sure you set that to your local value because otherwise the airplane's not going to descend to the right altitude. The other thing that I can do now to save myself from doing it later is set up the minimum descent altitude. And if I have a look at the chart, it says that I need to be at 405 feet. So what I'm going to do is go into the takeoff approach page and in the NDA field, I'm going to enter 405 and just load that in. And just as a reminder, an RNAV approach is considered a non-precision approach. And if you were to compare the MDA of the RNAV to 27 and the ILS to 27, you'd see that there's actually about a 200 foot difference, which makes sense because the ILS is always going to be a lot more precise. Alright, I'm just about parallel to the initial approach fix now, as you can see in the navigation display, and this is where things are going to get really busy, so make sure to be paying attention because we're going to do a few things in rapid succession. The first thing that we need to make sure of for the RNAV approach to work is that we need to be in nav mode on the autopilot. But before I can switch into it, what I'm going to do is just go into the Direct 2 menu, I'm going to select my first waypoint, which is the Hendon waypoint, and I'm going to insert that into the flight plan. If you have a look at the navigation display, that's added a nice loop from my current position to the first waypoint of the approach. And if I turn nav mode on now, you're going to see the plane's just automatically going to start following that flight path for me. Now, if I have a look at the takeoff approach page, you're going to see that by switching into nav mode, there's now a final 3.0 option that's appeared right at the bottom of the page. 3.0 is the number of degrees that it's going to use on the glide path from the final approach fix down to the MDA. And if we have a look at the chart, it actually matches up with the number that's written there. One thing to be aware of though is that you can't change the flight path angle to something else like say 3.5 degrees. It's locked in at 3 degrees. That's going to limit you in terms of which RNAV approaches you can actually fly. And you always want to make sure the glide path you're using it on is 3.0. I'll activate final mode now and you can see that it's now saying I'm about 1500 feet below the ideal 3 degree glide path, but that's okay for now. You can also see the vertical deviation in the navigation display and it works exactly like a glide slope. So when the carrot is centered, you're going to be right on glide path. 
And we're going to need to start descending soon, so I'm going to go right up to the AP altitude, and I'm going to bring that down to the final approach fix altitude of 1,800 feet. The next constraint, which is also really important for the RNF approach to work, is that you cannot be in profile mode as you go by the initial approach fix. In theory, you can be in any other mode, so alt hold, level change, vertical speed should all work. But I find it works most reliably with altitude hold mode and being at the platform altitude of the initial approach fix that you're going to be crossing. For example, like I am right now at 5,000 feet. Once I've gone by the initial approach fix, that's where I can hit the profile mode button again. And you're going to notice once I do that, the active mode in the primary flight display now says that we're in profile descent. But more interestingly, you can see the plane is starting to slow itself down to 128 knots now, which is shown right at the bottom of the airspeed indicator. And that's going to match up with our landing speed that's indicated in the takeoff approach page. That airspeed being shown at the bottom of the airspeed indicator is the easiest way to know that you're going to be descending with the RNAV approach. If it's not there, you likely missed the step. You'll notice that since I went to profile mode, the airspeed is also in managed mode now, and the airplane's taking its cues on when to slow down the airplane based on when I'm extending the flaps, very much like what happens in the A320. And that's the last thing you need to do for the RNAV approach to work. You need to be fully configured for landing by the time you get to the final approach fix, which is the point that's marked with that little X on the approach chart. So you need to make sure your gear is down and your flaps are fully extended by the time you get there, because that segment from the final approach fix to the MDA is where the airplane's going to fly that three degree descent rate. One last thing that's worth pointing out, if you're familiar with the A320, you know that when you're doing an RNAV approach, it's using something called the flight path angle, so FPA for short. And if you look closely at the FCU, there is an FPA button right there. The thing to be aware of though is if you do enable it and you switch it to whatever value, the autopilot is not going to respect that value. So if you want to fly a steeper RNAV approach, you can set it up so that you can see it in the primary flight display with it, but you're going to have to fly it by hand. With an ILS approach, the A310 can do an auto land, but when you're flying an RNAV approach, you have no choice but to disable the autopilot once you reach the MDA, as well as the auto throttle and just bring her in yourself. That's not a bad thing though, because it keeps your landing skills fresh, and it's probably the most fun part of the sim anyways, is to do that last little part to get her in and land. Speaking of which, I have released a previous video which explains how to hand fly this airplane and how to get better at that, so I'm going to link to it at the end of this one. So just to summarize really quickly before we get down on the ground, what you need to do for the RNAV approach to work. The first thing is you need to make sure that before you get to the initial approach fix, you're in nav mode and in alt mode. You want to make sure that your altimeter is set properly and that the MDA has been entered into the takeoff approach page. That's going to enable the final 3.0 option that you need to activate. And once you go past the initial approach fix, you can arm profile mode. And from there, all that's left is to configure the plane for landing by going full flaps and full gear by the time you get to the final approach fix. It's a lot of steps and a lot of little things that you need to get done in the right order, but hopefully this video demystified a lot of it for you. And if you got some value, please make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing as well.